All right, everybody. On this episode of Breakdown, we are dissecting Nightmare. The first thing that stood out to me was these little bells that we had. The ominous uh, yeah. foreboding. Yeah, I mean, we, had, we had the bells, we had the, the children from Tibet <laughs> singing. <laughs> no, we had all sorts of crap going on here, but um, what's interesting about these bells here I hadn't really um, heard that one in a long time. And I remember I had this like cheesy keyboard at my house, you know, the glockenspiel like tone or whatever, this was it. And we had had it for the demo. And I think when we went into the studio to try to like do a real version of yep. it or a cool one, it just didn't sound as good. Nope, I so, remember that too. So the, I think that other bell that was something we added in there, we're like, I guess we'll keep something else, but there was just no point. The initial, was that was the tone? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not really sure. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I guess. <laughs> or at least they've heard it long enough now that that's the only way it could <laughs> be. <laughs> I'm sure there's something better out there that we could have done. Um, very Aussie feel. Yeah, it was kind of a riff, and I think that for some reason the the whole just appealed to all of us, like just pure energy and like space, and there was just a lot of uh, just a lot of energy to this, and it felt like that opening of a record, like when you're a kid or you're a musician, you're trying to think of like what do I want to hear when you open up a record. This just appealed to all of us for some reason. And the notes are really eerie, so it's like. You're coming out with a lot of energy, but on the same token, it's really like dark and yeah, it reminds creepy. me of Ozzy, like very Ozzy, dark, scary, gothic. Yeah. It definitely sets the tone for the entire album, and lyrically, and and just everything that we had to get through to get make this. Absolutely, I think this song and like Buried Alive and Save Me to Me are the three like pillars of this record, and they all kind of have the same dark feel to them. Yeah, and this one is just like, you know, this is like the obvious like show this to people first, like put it on the radio and let it be on its way. So kind of use a, a little bit of a trick here, kind of like Beast and the Harlot where you pulse on that kick drum. Let's see here. Like a build, kind of like Beast and the Harlot and then all of a sudden we're back. You know, like the same sort of trick, I guess, in a way. Yeah. Dude, I remember singing this stupid nightmare thing over and over and over. Nightmare! Now your nightmare comes to life. That's the, the fun of having a song with lots of taglines. Yeah. You really have to make them perfect because they're going to be so focused on. I know. So in the studio, when you do the takes, we'd sit there and like mark down which ones were like, no, it has to be perfect. Like, Or like at the end of the nightmare, it'd be like, nightmare. Go flat for one second and you got to do it over. Like, it's like. Fuck. Yeah, can't fuck up the tagline. Um, so, but what I really enjoy the the juxtaposition of some of these parts, where it's just got all the energy, and then it drops into the riff, and then it's just got that one two, which kind of has become a classic thing for us. And we do it in Critical Claim, kind of do it in Beast in the Harlot, we do it in Nightmare, we do it in the stage. Yep. We kind of do it in the openings of all of our songs. So, I wonder <laughs> makes what, it easy what iteration for, is next. <laughs> makes it easy for the next time around. Yeah, one of our little tricks. Yes, kind of a funny part to put in there. I know. Well, so, a funny story, I don't know if you, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, yeah, it was like trying to figure out a way to like capture the energy or keep the energy coming back and forth. And like, I don't know why you got that hair up our ass, but it was like a cool thing to go back and forth because I hadn't really heard it before. Oh yeah, well like, it's hard to just stay on the one, two and keep it with energy, but doing that, just high vocal out of nowhere screaming it. It's like, holy shit. You know, maybe it was, it could have been like an influence of like System of a Down or something. Definitely That's very something. System of a Down-esque, even though it's got like a Aussie kind of, you know, gothic tone to it. Yep. One thing that, I don't know if you ever knew this, but I got a call from Craig Aronson after this and he's like, Matt, I think this song, Craig Aronson was our A&R guy and he, he was a, 
amazing man, but he, he, and he passed away um, a few years ago. But he gave me a call after he heard the record and he's like, you know, this song could be so big, but you're screaming the whole time. And I was like, I'm not screaming, I'm singing the notes. And he's like, no, but it, it's too aggressive. Why don't you just sing the notes instead of screaming those notes? And I was like, I'm not screaming them. <laughs> That's, I'm singing them. Like, and we had this huge debate and I think our manager stepped in and said, listen, it's, they want it like that, That's how it's gonna be. And it ended up being, a huge song for us, yep. but it, I kind of get his point. It is just screaming back and forth, and he was just coming off of Mike and a Romance and a bunch of stuff. I think he knew that someday Johnny would be singing it live. <laughs> and he knew that's the end of the song, it's the end of it, yeah. when Johnny does that, so he wanted to veer us away from that. So, this part here. He wanted that song. Oh well. Yeah. So it gives me some piano out of here. So we added a bunch of stuff on this chorus, but I think um, to, to smooth it all out, we kind of put these piano parts in here. So. Well, let's listen to all that then. Huh. It's kind of cool. There's a lot of stuff going on in that chorus there to really smooth it out and make it another juxtaposition from the screaming that was kind of the point. Let's see here. I mean, I think what happened there was that we wanted duels in there, and they just didn't sound good. I mean, the idea would be like, okay, like make the duels come in and it adds like some depth to it, but I think the duel probably stepped on something or it didn't sound right. So we probably were going in and out going like, okay, is it better with or without these yeah. guitars? And we just liked it. Yeah, the one texture guitar just sitting still actually smooths out the chorus yeah. a lot. It's weird. Yeah. And then let's go to the second chorus because this will be kind of more interesting going to the second half of that. Nightmare. <laughs> so, I remember riding my bicycle from basketball and this whole song kind of came to me right before my wedding. And I was definitely stuck on the bridge for a long time and I wanted something in a different feel and time. And I remember just having this long build up to the bridge was cool, but for some reason on this record, we had like a total hard on for just doing straight drop D, just dun 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 da dun dun da dun da And just working with rhythms and not really changing notes. We did it in Buried Alive, we did it in this song, and I think they were really impactful parts. And I remember Jimmy had come up with the call and answer of the fight, fight, not the fail, fail, not the fall, fall. It was like just the idea of like working with rhythms vocally. And I thought it was, it kind of made the part to me. It made me want to make it double the amount of time like where normally you'd kind of go for it. But it was just so cool to keep rocking. Yeah. Like you didn't want to be taken out of that feel. So this bridge here was kind of a cool, you know, it just felt so good. You just wanted to keep just, going. Just sit on it for sure. It's your fucking nightmare. I mean, was this real strings? I don't remember. That can't be. No. That's not real. <laughs> Fake as fuck. <laughs> or the guy with like the longest <laughs> breath of all time. <laughs> dude. And then this was just the drums were killer on this. Portnick. A lot of Pantera influence here. Yeah. Vinnie Paul influence. Just want it to sound like it's like, you know, tap dancing across like a, a floor that, it's very cool. I was so sad with all those duels. I was like, fuck, I'm gonna have to practice this so much. <laughs> it's so hard, but 
Nah, that's, that's no, I just get it. 